And now to Stephanie Link's call of the day. Yep, from one of our very own today and the new stock she's adding to her portfolio. You want to tell us what it is? Yeah, FIS, it's a fintech company. They bought WorldPay, and that's the reason why I like it, actually. I think you're going to see better than expected revenue and cost synergies. In fact, last week when they reported their second quarter, they actually upped their revenue synergies. I think there's way more to go. I think it's in the tune of something like $600 million over the next several years. And cost synergies, they haven't even started yet. But, you know, when you, when you merge two companies, you're going to see it. And I think you're going to see two to $400 million of cost synergies. I also think organic growth at 7% is easily upped going forward as the two companies uh, combined. And I think you can see something like 9 to 10% organic growth. The stock's trading at a discount to its group. So I sold PayPal, had a nice had a nice gain in it, and I put it into this. Chart Great company. In, chart looks incredible. Okay. Great company, a company that I had owned this time last year, uh, got melted out of it. By Fidelity? The, I, uh, FIS, I had owned this, yeah. this time Fidelity. last year. Fidelity National. It's yes. Yeah. Uh, the World Pay acquisition diversifies the story for this company, and I think that's the, what really will be the catalyst moving forward. You thought about this company previously was financial service, yeah. services oriented. It catered to banking. Uh, that now takes this place uh, to a much more diversified one. What is it? What is a comp for this? Is this like uh, Fiserv? Yeah, or? Fiserv okay. for sure. I mean, right. throw PayPal in there. You can. But, but this grows that, faster, you're saying? Well, I think, well, PayPal is going to grow faster than FIS, but FIS probably over the long term grows faster than Fiserv. So That's it's what like, I mean. You know, yeah, there's okay. all different degrees. I just think that the valuation discount doesn't really make a lot of sense. You know, I owned this stock coming out of the financial uh, crisis and owned it for about five years, and it was a home run. Mm. Um, run by a guy named Foley at the time who's no longer there. But this, this ha company has a long track record of making a lot of money. Um, I haven't looked at it in a while, Steph, but you're inciting me to do so. I think it's probably going to be a winner Can for you. Can we address the PayPal sale a little more specifically? I mean, you, you said, you know, did well, but it's still selling it. Yeah, no, I, I made, yeah, I made a nice money in it. <laughs> um, but I just kind of felt like last quarter, they slipped. I mean, clearly, they, right, they had contracts slip, and they didn't execute as well as I thought that they would have. And, it, you know, at the time, it was trading at 35 times forward. So that's a bit rich. I have no problem getting back into it if it were to pull back. I just think that this FIS story is a nice one. It's a little more defensive, by the way, and not as much volatility as something like a PayPal. And in this environment, it's kind of nice to have that as well. You didn't want Square at 62? <laughs> no. Can we hit the financials since we, we went there anyway? They They've already been hit, Scott. Yeah, well, <laughs> if some of these calls are right about where rates are going to go in the, yeah. in the weeks ahead, months so, ahead, look, I don't I, have anybody I'm, picking I'm any of these names today. I'm still in the big ones, right, City and Goldman Sachs, but I'm certainly not in them for the net interest margin, okay? For what's going to happen with net interest margin, look at the European banks over the last five years as you've seen interest rates come down into negative territory. That's not the reason to own them. It's because they're diversified. You've got trading, you've got uh, credit cards, you've got all sorts of other things that they can make money on, uh, including fintech, which the leaders are coming out with. So that's the reason to own them. The NIM story, net interest margin, is bad. We know it's bad. It's already you know priced. I'm in Schwab, which is an absolute dog. Stock is now at three-year lows. They they should be buying because of interest rates. It's it totally interest Th rates. Th yeah. th thanks. Yeah. I'm new here. They should. They Schwab, please buy back uh, ten or fifteen percent of your stock. Well, see, that's what's interesting about something like Bank of America, right? Because you can say all you want about NIM, and I know it's going to come down. I get it. But also, they have a cost-cutting story, and then they also are buying back a ton of their stock. I mean, all the big banks are buying. I mean, Citigroup is buying huge amount of stock buybacks, and you get it actually now not the a big banks are. Doing okay, more so. of that than the brokers are. Yeah. The brokers, the the brokers need to ask themselves what else they're doing with capital, if not that, because uh, these stocks, along with the asset manager, I mean, it is it's yeah. just a, a massacre. I just worry you, about the competition. You shouldn't you shouldn't have you shouldn't have an economy with sub four percent unemployment, um, all time highs in in things like consumer confidence, etc. Um, if you're a financial sector stock and you're at a three year low while that's going on, what environment are you looking for? Are you like there's going to be a recession at some point. What are you doing now Which to make me, hay while the sun is shining? Which leads me to my last question of, on this segment. So, okay, I get it. If you're in these stocks, maybe you're going to stick with it for the reasons that, you know, you've laid out. And Jim says they're doing this, that, and the other thing. I don't hear anybody saying they put fresh capital into any <laughs> of these money center banks. We'll or say that when they make new highs. <laughs> that's, when we'll, that's when we'll tell you that. But, <laughs> Because it's hard Seriously, to justify. No. It's just it's hard to justify. You're absolutely right. I can't commit new capital. I'm not going to give up on what's there. But there's no reason to get excited when you have a yield curve that's not only flat.
but going down. That just weighs on okay. it. But, but you don't it, give up on it. I think you can own something like Blackstone. I think you can own something like AIG. Yes, well, that's like, like, There are some special Yeah, helping me make my point, right? I know. I, I, know, I get it's, it. I don't no. hear anybody saying Bank of America, City, JP Morgan. I love JP Morgan. I'd buy the dip here. I'd buy the dip here. Goldman was one of the best July performers out of the Dow. Wealth management. I, mean, I, I own them. I, I, I would agree with all that. I'm holding on to financials. I have KKR, but I'm also guilty of having J.P. Morgan and Citi. And the other part of this conversation is there's an election coming up in 2020, and the banks will be squarely from the Democrats at the center of that platform. And if someone like Senator Elizabeth Warren does win, banks can have a problem. Right.